Hello, and welcome to week number nine, lesson tutorial for pre-college math. I'm getting so excited. I can smell spring break already. Remember, after this week, we have next week off because it is spring break. Yay, so excited. All right, let's get going. Um, this week, we're going to be using the method of elimination to solve systems of linear equations in two variables. In the past couple of weeks, we've used graphing to solve systems of equations. We used um, substitution to solve systems of equations. This week, we're going to be using what's called elimination. Now, some books call it the addition method, um, which I usually call it the addition method because that's basically what we're doing is we're adding down to get rid of the variables, but you can call it anything you want. All right, so the steps. To use the method of elimination to solve a system of two linear equations in X and Y, perform the following steps. Obtain coefficients for X or Y that differ only in, in sign by multiplying all the terms of one or both equations by a suitable chosen constant. Sometimes you don't have to do that, okay? Um, add the equations to eliminate one variable. Solve the resulting equation. Back substitute the value obtained in step two in either of the original equations to solve for the other variable. Check your solution in both of the original equations to make sure your answer works. Okay, so here's an example of what we're talking about this week. If you have a problem like this, if we talk about using the elimination method, or as I said, I usually call it the addition method. Let me turn on my marker here. Um, so I have, I'm just gonna rewrite it, 3x plus 5y is equal to seven and negative three X minus two Y is equal to negative one. Now, if you can add straight down and one of the variables crosses off, then this is a, an amazing method to use. So here, if I add three X and negative three X, that crosses off. And that's what has to happen in order for the elimination method to work. So now I have five Y plus negative two Y, which is three Y is equal to seven plus negative one, which is six. Now, if I divide through by three, I end up with y is equal to two. Oh, I've got one of my variables. So I know my answer is gonna be two in there for my y value. How do I find my x value? Well, I just pick one of the original equations. Let's pick this one. And we plug two in for y. So if I put two right here, I end up with a three x plus five times two, which is 10 is equal to seven. Subtract the 10 off of both sides. So 3x equals negative 3. If I divide through by 3, I end up with x equals negative 1. And I am done. Now, I could have used the second equation. I would have gotten the same exact answer. I would have gotten negative 1. So that is called the elimination method. Now, sometimes when you add straight down, none of the variables cross off. So we're going to have to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so they ended up with y is equal to 2. Then they back substituted for x, ended up with negative one. So now in this problem here, if I add straight down, I see that the y's are gonna cross off. So I'm just gonna use the elimination method or the addition method. Uh, 3x plus 5x is 8x. 2y plus negative 2y goes away. Four plus eight is 12, divide through by eight. And I end up with x equals what is that going to be? Um, four goes in there three times, three halves. So now in order to solve or to find my y value, because I know my x value is three halves, I'm just going to pick either one of the equations. I'm going to pick the top one. So three times three halves plus two y is equal to four. Three times three, times three halves is nine halves plus two y is equal to four. What is this? Uh, I'm just going to subtract nine halves off and I just make this make this eight halves um, minus nine halves, which is two y is equal to negative one half. Divide through by two and I end up with y is equal to negative one fourth. I love this method when it's not set up for substitution like neither of these equations would be really nice to use substitution, right? I mean, if you, you wanted to rewrite it as y is equal to or x is equal to, that would be a tough thing to do. But doing the addition method makes it easy. Now let's try problems where adding straight down doesn't cross off a variable. 
Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna look at this problem here. I'm gonna look at this one. If I add straight down right now, neither of the variables cross off. So what I have to do is I have to multiply one of the equations by a number. And this is where a lot of students, they struggle. It's like, do you wanna get rid of the X's? Do you wanna get rid of the Y's? It makes no difference. For example, if I multiply this equation here by three, every single term by three, I end up with, I'll write it down here, 9x plus 3y is equal to negative 45. Now, do you see why I multiply by three? Because in the second equation, I have 2x minus 3y is equal to 23. Now, when I add straight down, the y's are going to cross off. That's why I multiply by three, because I looked here and it's like, oh, I've got negative three. If I get this to be a positive three, I they cross off. So this becomes 11x is equal to, uh, what is that, 22, negative 22. So x equals negative 2. So that's what you want to do when, when you add straight down and neither of the variables cross off. You want to make sure that you have to, and sometimes you have to multiply both of the equations. Okay, that's, that's when it gets a little, little wonky where you have to do both of them, but it still will work. Graphical interpretation of two variable systems. Okay, so it is possible. Let's take a look at a graphing. It's possible that if you graph this, these two equations out, it's the exact same line. So that means every answer that works for this equation will work for this one. So we would say that there is an infinite number of solutions. Here, if it's parallel, we say there's no solutions. And here, we have one solution. Now, inconsistent and consistent up here, it says, if a system of linear equations has two different solutions, then it must have an infinite number of solutions, right? Because you can't have, you can have either no solutions, one solution, or an infinite many solutions, okay? And that's where this graphical interpretation comes in. You can have an infinite number, you can have no solutions, or you have one solution. That's it when you're solving two systems of equations. If you have exactly one solution, the two lines intersect at one point. If you have infinite number of solutions, the lines are coincidental, which means they're identical. No solutions means the lines are parallel. A system of linear equations is consistent when it has at least one solution. So one solution or an infinite many solutions is a consistent um, system. It is inconsistent when it has no solutions. And that means it would have to be parallel lines, right? Now, in this practice problem, it says solve using any method you want. Now, I look at this problem, it's like, okay, we just learned how to do the addition method. There's no way I'm using the addition method on this problem. This problem is set up for substitution. I know what y is equal to y is equal to x minus 1. So I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 5x plus 3 times, and I'm going to put the x minus 1 in here, equals negative 6. So negative 5x plus, and then I'm going to distribute this through. Uh, so 3x minus 3 is equal to negative 6. Um, 3x minus 8 is equal to negative 6. Add 8 to both sides. 3x is equal to negative uh, nope, that would be positive 2. Divide 2, divide 3, and I get x equals 2 thirds. Now, can I stop? Hmm, I don't see any problem up here that has 2 thirds as an answer. So, did I make a mistake? I might have, but let's check this out. Um, if I subtract that off, if I put two thirds in there, I think I'm just going to go with inconsistent here. That means if I graph them out, they're going to be parallel. Mm, but I'm looking at this problem and there's no way that's parallel. <laughs> there's no way that's parallel because if I rewrite this, I end up with um, 3y equals 5x minus 6 divided through by 3, 
So it can't be parallel lines. So I must have made a mistake someplace in here. So let's go back through here. So if I use x minus 1 and plug that in there, negative 5x plus 3 times x minus 1 is equal to negative 6. Negative 5x. Oh, that's negative 5x. I, I think I lost. Sure, maybe I didn't. 3x minus 3. So if I put these together, I end up with negative 2x minus 3 is equal to 6. If I add 3 to both sides, okay, there we go. I did make a mistake over here. Is equal to 9. Uh, divide through by negative 2 here. So x equals negative 9. Negative 9 halves. I still don't see negative 9 halves up there. I see 9 halves. I don't see negative 9 halves. So if I add 3 here, I get 9. Divide through by negative 2. Interesting. Not exactly sure where I made the mistake. Oh, well. <laughs> We're too close to spring break to, to care. Have a great spring break. And I will try to look at that problem and see where I made my mistake. I'm sure it's something silly. All right. Hope to see you guys on Monday. Bye.